Afternoon all, Jasper Lawler here. Let's get started with this week's weekly charting analysis webinar. Definitely going to be an interesting week. We've got the end of quantitative easing, the stimulus program from the Fed that's pretty much propped up stock markets this uh, this last couple of years. So that's pretty big. Uh, before we get to that though, I've got the risk warning on the screen. I'm hoping you've all read that first page. Let's shoot through to the next one. Well, it's a bit of an aside, so let's just start with it, um, just because I did a bit more of a sort of um, exaggerated chart picture than I typically would, but uh, Twitter report earnings after the close of US markets today. Um, so even if you're not trading individual stocks, um, you know, this is um, always, uh, well, not always, but the last couple of reports, uh, earnings reports for Twitter have been pretty volatile. And so I thought it worth just putting a uh, chart foreign post up there. And according to the chart, you know, we are potentially at a bit of a turning point with Twitter. <coughs> so what you can see here is that uh, this is a daily chart. And so we're, we're trending higher. We're the the 50-day uh, moving average, if I scroll out a bit, you can see has been quite instructive in terms of the general direction of the trend. You can see we've sort of come back, break out of it on that stronger up movement, come down, retest, and we've been higher above, and now we're grinding into it again. So that's not to say we're going to definitely go below it, but there are a couple of indications we could. One is this bearish divergence in the RSI, and the other is the fact that we've made a lower low. So if you consider that the, um, the first low, I wouldn't typically classify this as a low, because, I mean, each to their own in terms of how you do call a low and maybe you don't even consider highs and lows important. I, I think they're um, essential. Um, so if there's two higher closes um, on that side, but on this side only one. So to me that's not quite a low. So even though it proved to be quite instructive of what was to happen next, to me this is the big one. Because you've got plenty of highs and lows on, on either side, it was a longer term more significant low point. And we've moved below, beyond there, and you could actually consider this a high at this point because it's had two days either side. So a lower low and a lower high. So you know, technically that's a downtrend, but it's not always as easy as that. Um, what would be looking to, to move down there would be the big confirmation, and that would also obviously be below the rising trend line. Um, and then we get into the territory of this gap which often act as a support, so that whole zone would potentially be support. But given that we've closed that much before, I wouldn't be unduly surprised if we went and dropped down to the, the beginning of that gap and just closed that whole gap. And that would be a change in trend, and you, we could even be pushing down below 30. It depends how um, how bad it is for Twitter. Of course, it may not be bad at all. Um, the uh, Last report was actually was actually quite good, and it's just been sold off a bit recently, just because of a, a general sell-off in um, some of the more high valuation stocks going into this earnings season. So always hard to know exactly what the um, earnings will be, whether it will be a beat or a miss. But um, here's the technical setup, so definitely worth considering. Now back to markets as a whole. Um, I'm going to go straight to the the German DAX, just because um, the big data that we've seen so far today was the German IFO. So that's just a business sentiment report that's pretty widely watched. And there was some hope that after uh, I believe six months, no five months of declines, there was some hope that actually we'd see a bit of an uptick this month. Uh, and that's not happened. It actually is the same in terms of, of future expectations which is kind of the key one to work because you obviously want to know what's going to happen in the future, not what people think about the current environment, but what they think about the future is key, uh, particularly in terms of businesses and whether they're going to invest in, the, uh, in some future projects. Um, so that was actually just the same as uh, last month, which is obviously not a decline, so that's good, but um, the, the rest of the report was a decline and it still missed expectations. And so that has essentially undone the um, sort of positive feeling that came out of these uh, European bank stress tests that came out over the weekend. Um, 
basically 25 banks out of 130 failed these stress tests, but only um, a handful of those actually need to um, raise capital um, uh, in order to shore up their balance sheets to a sufficient standard to actually there, then pass the test. Um, why is that important? Well, the European Central Bank have been trying to stimulate the, the European economy because there's been um, low price inflation. And uh, one of the la recent measures they did was this uh, TLTRO program. And uh, silly name, but all it is is just um, the offering of sort of cheaper interest rate loans to banks to then hand out to businesses. Um, specifically, the, the, lo the money has to go to lending towards a business to obviously stimulate the European economy, which has been in a, a rough state since the European debt crisis. Um, and so the thought here is that maybe now that this bank stress test is out of the way, um, banks don't have to worry about um, having sufficient money on their um, balance sheets. They passed the test, so now they can make some more loans again. And so this may be the turning point for when the European economy can pick up with um, banks now feeling much more um, need to much more able to uh, to hand out loans and uh, so then conversely if the, the European economy does pick up then you know there wouldn't be any need for the, the ECB to do full-on quantitative easing and um, that would potentially be not such a good thing for uh, stock markets but I would argue perhaps a good thing for the euro the euro has been declining pretty massively since it hit 140, and um, you know if, if massive amounts of euros are not going to be printed in a quantitative easing program, you know that'd be kind of supportive of the euro. But as I mentioned, the Fed is uh, the U.S. Federal Reserve, the central bank there, is ending its quantitative, pro uh, quantitative easing program this this month, and uh, you know markets are looking for someone to take the baton. And um, you know, maybe that's not going to be the ECB if if um, their current programs, this TLTRO program, works. So that's the possible implications of all this. Um, there is a distinct possibility that um, it makes no difference. Um, there are a lot of people out there, um, almost myself included, I think maybe just more of the issue is just a lack of demand. In the European economy, so you know, if, uh, a demand for loans. Um, so if, you know, if it's just a really weak business environment, um, you know, the business is, is struggling. Uh, you're not going to take on a loan to, you know, because you're feeling so confident. You know, you're actually not feeling confident. You don't want a loan. Um, so just the fact that banks feel more capable of making loans doesn't mean that people actually are going to want to take them up. <coughs> so that's that's you know, the, that's what we're going to be monitoring in the months to come and so when these um the next set of um take up from this TLTRO that would be that'd be important given that this bank stress test is now out of the way. Technically with the with the DAX, um you can see it a bit better on the uh, the weekly chart and I've mentioned this a few times now. This is the uh sort of head and shoulders formation. So this would be the uh sort of double ish left shoulder, triple even. Uh this would be the head, this would be the right shoulder. You could you could also call it um triple top, I would say more accurately, a, a um, head and shoulders. So it's broken the neckline. That would be about, so you can either use that as a neckline, which would be the two lows, which do correspond pretty well, or kind of closing prices. And I would, uh, closing uh, weekly prices. And so that proved to be perhaps a bit more instructive. And so that's where we are now. And you, you know, it's not necessarily a big coincidence. Uh, I had this line drawn in, you know, weeks ago. That's where we're reversing at the moment, and it's right around this 90-50 mark. <coughs> so what we could have seen here, technically, is a pattern breakout, a retest of the breakout area, the neckline of the head and shoulders pattern, to subsequently make the next move down. <coughs> um, so that's you know that's something to something to bear in mind, and um, that would put us you know with this, this sort of low down here, but I believe it's sort of about seven seven fifty or something. I believe is about the projection. What you do is take the height of the head from the breakout area, perhaps this, 
the 90-50 mark and uh, project that downwards. So definitely an important price level right now. Um, you know, if this does, if this pattern does prove to be work out, you know, this would be, um, yeah, pretty. You know, if this, if this was a retest here, and then it moves down, obviously this would be a great place to be selling. But we'll only know that with the benefit of hindsight. <coughs> uh, this could be the end of the correction. Uh, this is about 10% from the highs. So a lot of people have that 10% number kind of in mind. You know, this could be the end of the correction, only for us to make up uh, new highs. A lot of that could depend, maybe not even on um, um, German domestic conditions, but more just the overall international stock markets and how things pan out with uh, U.S. corporate earnings and uh, the end of quantitative easing. So with that in mind, let's have a look at the, the U.S. 30. So here looks very similar. Um, so on the weekly chart, you can see this longer term trend line that I've got here going way back since the bottom of the financial crisis in March 2009, connecting this these lows here. And so you can see we're well above that. So even if we did make a new low, which we haven't quite done yet, we'd still have the support potentially of that rising trend line. So it's still pretty constructive on the, um, the US stock market. And obviously we've not even made a lower low on the uh, the weekly chart yet. This this level is um, you know you can see we bounced off there pretty nicely. So then it's a matter of well are we going to go down perhaps challenge this line here um, and the and the the long term rising trend line? Well then we'd need to sort of look at the um, the daily chart for that. This is what you call a sort of V bottom potentially if it is in fact a bottom. It's been a very sharp move down and a very sharp move back up again. So Definitely great market for uh, trading, a lot of big price movement. <coughs> um, so what I'm kind of weighing up here is the fact that um, in terms of highs and lows, you know, this was really the last high that was formed, it's is way up here. So still, theoretically, anywhere below there, we could still roll over and still be in the context of a downtrend. So, so if that was the last high, this was the last low, None of these really, on a kind of daily basis, classify as lows um, in terms of that definition that I previously used of just two higher close of these aside. So this would be a consideration because this is, um, you know, you can see we kind of broke through there. We had these kind of two lows there. That could be big. I'm also looking at this big spike here, which kind of proved constructive in the past and kind of matches these lows and this high-ish on the past. So this zone is tricky and we've had such a big strong move up you've got to feel that it would correct somehow uh, at some point so what we're either going to see here is maybe a correction lower down here and then a further bounce up again or just that's the end of it and we're down again to, to potentially test that longer term trend line. For short term trading you know we're in an uptrend um, got to be a bit wary of this movement from today. Um, harder to see the levels on the the US 30, but um, obviously looking at that German DAX, uh, the Germany 30 chart, um, that um, you know that level is a bit more significant, and we're seeing a sort of similar reversal on this four-hour chart there. So potentially the, the beginning, the end for this correction. But as of the moment, we're still above the 50 on this uh, four-hour chart, and we're still above the 21 period MA. So default is you've got to assume we're trending higher, but you've got to be aware of this longer-term picture that actually, technically, we're still going down. So when thinking about the US 30, the US SPX, the US NDAC 100, and um, any of the dollar currency pairs, definitely, and, uh, and in fact gold, we've got to think about the, uh, the US Fed this month. And, and on Wednesday, the Fed is expected to end their quantitative easing program by cutting the last $15 billion that they pump in each month 
from uh, from the QE program and ending it. So, <coughs> um, you know, that's a certain amount of liquidity that's been provided to you, and the markets are used to that amount of liquidity. Um, when you've got a big buyer in the market buying up treasuries and mortgage-backed securities, it's it's supportive of, of risk taking in general. Um, people, you've got a big buyer like that, you know, people just tend to be on the side of buying uh, rather than selling. And um, so when that ends, you know, it's, it's going to be down to the economy and the uh, stock market to hold up on its own. And it's pretty highly valued right now, so there's uh, you know there's a distinct risk that it won't be able to. A good measure for how this um, this this report on Wednesday gets judged will be gold. Can have a look at that chart in a second. Uh, but just in terms of what to look out for in this report, you know they're almost definitely going to taper the 15 billion. They may not. If they don't, that would be, I would think, pretty supportive of the stock market and also pretty supportive of gold. You know, the more they, gold did really well um, <coughs> in the years. Um, kind of leading up to and during the first part of the quantitative easing program but when it looked like it was going to be starting to kind of tapered off that's when gold just couldn't get up beyond that two thousand dollars per, per ounce mark and we're in this kind of correction phase now um, so almost definitely going to taper and that would be theoretically bad for gold um, just because they're getting closer to raising interest rates and sort of um, going uh, you know uh, there's not going to be that much risk of sort of a hyperinflation in which you would need gold as a protection if um, you know if they're just raising rates to kind of um, um, which generally acts to curb inflation what they could do is uh, change the statement um, there's a big statement in there which references a considerable period of time referencing when they're going to hike rates next um, so if they if they change that to indicate that they may hike rates sooner, then um, yeah, that would probably be pretty bad for uh, stock markets, and uh, and also pretty bad for for gold. So that would be certainly something to watch out for. Um, the general assumption I think out there though is that they won't be changing the statement. Really, all they're going to do is end QE, so as not to really to rock the boat too much with all too much in one meeting next next month could be could be one in which they uh, they change their statement but i think they're trying to kind of anchor interest rate expectations not worry the markets too much just say you know, it's going to be the middle of next year by the time we raise rates but uh, while we're on the gold chart let's have a look at it so you can see well you can see on that longer term chart we hit that 1180 for the third time we bounced off there pretty strongly but we've now broken through this um, this rising trend line on the four-hour chart, and these two blue lines just correlate, uh, correlate to the, um, the recent highs and lows as I judged them on the the daily chart. So we've broken the rising trend line on the short term, but we've not broken below this um, this low here, and we're just um, we're just in a really sort of tight range because gold is very sensitive to the Fed and in interest rate expectations. So a move below there doesn't bode well. We're, we could be in for another test of 11.80 if we drop below this uh, this low blue line here, which corresponds to the kind of uh, most recent low. But we're above the low at the moment, and we have made a higher high just about. So even though we've broken this short-term trend line, still the general assumption would be um, that gold can hold above and. and at least retest the high again, perhaps make a new high, just with the idea that trends tend to last longer than you expect. I'm jumping around a bit here, but while we're on the commodities space, um, let's have a look at oil. It's obviously been a pretty um, huge market um, of late um, in terms of the direction of trend. Um, for those of you who've been trading a while, you've been loving it. For those of you who've been new to trading, perhaps you've missed some of this trend. But this really is great trading um, when you when you have such a sharp trend like this. Because you know, what are your decisions when you're deciding on a trend uh, on a trade? Um, you know, decide what market to trade. 
you know, decide what direction you're going to trade in that market. Obviously, with CMC markets, you can trade long or short, and uh, and then exactly where to time your trade uh, is obviously key. That that second element is often overlooked in terms of just actually picking the right direction. Your timing doesn't have to be that great if you get the right direction and you put your stops in the right places. Um, you can sort of uh, improve how much risk you're taking each time. Um, you know, if uh, you know if this was the downtrend in, in crude, with the benefit of hindsight, um, we're looking for a continuation of the downtrend. You know, if you place your trade up here short and you had your stop above the previous high, you're taking a very small amount of risk selling up here. And that, on the benefit of hindsight, that would have worked out beautifully. But if as long as you got the direction right, you could have sold down here. Yeah, you would have been sweating when it was bouncing up here. But as long as you had your stop above the previous high, which um, you know, is the definition of the downtrend that we're making lower lows, uh, lower highs, you know, you'd still eventually be good. So can't overestimate how important it is to have a nice strong trend, and then that's what we've got in oil right now. Um, obviously, you've got to be cognizant of when it could end, and uh, we've just yeah, in WTI we've just hit 80. Um, and so the dynamics in the oil market right now are <coughs> mostly uh, centered around global supply and demand, not so much global geopolitics. That's just really being discounted at the moment because nothing's massively disrupting oil production. Um, in Iraq and Syria and Libya, it's, um, nothing actually is halting oil production right now. Same, same with Russia. That's the, um, they're thre you know, threatening to... Um, not distribute natural gas, uh, or they're not giving Ukraine any natural gas at the moment, and that's a bit of a sort of political um, turbul turbulent situation at the moment. But um, in terms of oil, that's not so much a factor. It's just the fact that um, global, uh, you know, global the global economy seems to be slowing a bit, particularly coming from Germany and China. Uh, China especially is obviously a massive uh, consumer of commodities, and it's slowing a bit. And um, the U.S. is now producing lots of oil, so there's a lot more oil out there, and there's potentially less people wanting it. Um, so the prices um, have been crashing down. But as I said, we hit this key 80 level. So then you can see um, better one of my on a daily chart now, on a four-hour chart, you can see we're in this kind of range. So really, on um, WTI, um, it's 80 is key, but it's about 80, 70 to this 83.90, but really we're talking about 84. And then in um, in Brent, it's really the same thing, but it's 83 to 87 is the range. So we're in the sideways market right now. We're hitting the bottom of the range. Um, depending on your trading style, this potentially is a um, <coughs> is a bear flag, and we potentially broken out uh, excuse me what? so yeah as of this candle we've broken out if you're trading that um, that that bear flag so we could be in for new lows and just based on that idea again that you know the trend is down you know we really want to be trying to trend with trade with the direction of the trend but we just got to be aware of the potential for it to reverse um, 80 is a big round number and it could still hold and uh, I think um, the the thing that could make it hold is um, what what OPEC does um, namely Saudi Arabia they've been cutting prices to their supplies to Asia um, sort of uh, but they it did apparently in September cut the amount that was supplied to the market. So they produced the same, but they cut the amount of oil they supplied to the market um, in an attempt to, um, you know, obviously that same discussion, be less less supply on the market to, to match that less demand and, and push prices back up. Because obviously as an oil producer, they want higher oil prices because they make more money. So the next OPEC meeting is in November. So that, uh, if they actually do cut production, or or some of the other OPEC countries start to at least cut supply to the market, you know that could be a changing dynamic. As of now, we're still talking about higher supply than higher demand, and 
the trend is down. Um, we're hitting the bottom of the range now. So if you're a breakout trader, you'd be, you know, you'd be um, eyeing up this area. You know, if you're waiting for corrections, we're obviously right at the low right now, so not optimum in terms of a um, a bounce for for selling. Now, let's um, let's get into the currencies. Pound is interesting right now. This is the daily chart. What I'm looking at here is kind of a wedge with bullish RSI divergence. So um, I'm sure all of you are familiar, but for those who aren't, and when you see price making lower lows, you see that yeah, an indicator, a momentum indicator like the RSI making higher lows, shows the price is um, still trending down, but it's just got less momentum behind it. So this um, this 50 level, it, when you're using the RSI with the period 14, and well any period really, but particularly within 14, is um, deemed significant. If you're above, if you're below there, which you can kind of see, you know, we we're kind of rough. We were sort of bouncing around, uptrending it mostly above it here. We've been below it for this period, and obviously that was a that was a downtrend as well. So yeah, it's just an extra, extra indication to judge which way to be trading. And we've tested off there. We look like maybe we're going for another test, potentially a move through, and that would correspond with the top of this uh, this wedge and this declining trend line. And we've got this um, you know this divergence going on. So the trend is not reversed yet, but we could in the, be in the midst of a higher low. We've not seen a higher high yet. So I've got my line drawn there. Actually, I need to update it. It's more like there is the uh, the line in the sand now. <coughs> Short term, I don't think that changes the picture too much. You can just see it in a bit more detail. It's kind of a choppy market in the short term. It's, you need this at the moment. Daily chart is a clear one for the pound for me. Euro. Um, <coughs> Similar situation. Euro's obviously tanked, but we've hit 125, the round number. We've gone up, hit 129, where we had this last period of consolidation. And obviously, that was a low of that area. No coincidence that we banged into that. We've come back down, and we're in a kind of a range trading situation. And these blue lines that I've got on the chart, see better on the four hour chart, there you can see it corresponds to the highs and lows on the daily chart. And here you can see it in a bit more detail on the short-term chart. We're in a range trade right now. So with the benefit of hindsight, obviously, buying off these low at the bottom of the range is good. We've come off the round number around 127. Theoretically, we're going sideways in the short term. We've broken through this slight rising area, um, but probably ahead of the... Um, the FOMC on Wednesday, we're not going to get any gargantuan moves in, in dollar pairs. Dollar yen. And uh, we're nearing the end of the, the session here, so um, any questions at all, pop, put it through the chat window, um, and uh, you know, I'll get to that um, after the official webinar time. So um, for those of you who are following the chart forum, you would have seen this um, head and uh, inverse head and shoulders that I pointed to. Not quite made the target area yet, and we're in this kind of um, uh, consolidation period again ahead of the uh, the Fed. We've got the, quite a bit of uh, data out of the out of Japan as well this week. We've got the, the Bank of Japan uh, rate setting meeting, so that will also have been that will also be of some influence. Um, so we've not quite hit the objective yet for this this pattern. If it is to play out, we did break out. So my assumption is if we break out of this pattern based on this pattern here. Um, but obviously, if this if we break below this um, the bottom of this range, I've got to assume maybe we're heading back down to the uh, the neckline again, which would um, stretch out over here down to this 107 mark, and uh, also matches along with this. Um, Consolidation area there. So below there, we're probably coming into this area, but still looks like a um, looks like a continuation pattern to me. 
where you have you know more like a, a kind of bull flag. There's the pole, and there's the um, there's the rectangle, and then it's a similar up to 110 again. <coughs> but uh, remains to be seen if in fact that plays out. Okay, I'm going to um, just stop the recording here. So any of those who um, have to get back at the end of their, their lunch break, um, thanks a lot for attending. Um, again, there will be a recording of this on YouTube should you want to check back or, uh, or obviously feel free to share it. Um, for those of you who want to stick around, I've got um, a quick question here that I'm, I'm going to answer from the, from the chat window.